Okay guys, welcome back to Auto Rebuilds Garage and today we got Andrew with us with this sick boat. And he's gonna tell us more about this boat and what he did to it, all the components. So be sure to follow him on Instagram. He has all behind the scenes of all the close-ups and everything he's been doing to it, all the short clips and him out in the lake. So let's... I got an Instagram on my story. It's got a chronological order. Every picture of the entire build and the order I did it. So you can go on to my Instagram, S1000 underscore pilot. And you can check out the full story on there that shows everything that was done through the course of four months. Okay, so break it down from the beginning. Where did you get this boat and how did it all come about? So my family's had this boat, my dad, for a little, almost 20 years. He bought it in 2001 out of one of his friend's garages. The boat itself is a 1992 and it's a completely custom hull. The guy who made it built the, the mold and actually died. And when he died, his wife didn't like boats, so she had the molds thrown away. So what you see here with the motor in the front um, and sitting behind it, this is a one of one. There's no other boats like this. Um, if there is, send me a picture because I'd love to see it. <laughs> um, so we've had it for about 20 years. Before it had this motor in it, it had just a basic Ford 302, uh, eight to one compression, no turbos on it. Made about 300 horse, had a mild cam in it. It was fun, um, you know, for a 13 foot boat, most people would already think, you know, 300 horse would be enough, but uh, that's not how I roll. So then this last winter, we were out of Harrison, which is kind of the spot where I hang out. My buddy and I had the idea, we're like, you know what? Let's, let's spin turbo it. You know, it's already crazy enough. Why not make it more crazy? That's what everybody does nowadays. So um, that's when this came to life. So what you see is a product of lots of people coming together to crazy imagination. Crazy imagination. Reality. What was the engine before in this thing? I know you said it was a... So when my dad got the boat in 19, or 2001, it had a Mazda rotary, I believe it was an RX-7. I'm not a tuner guy, so I don't know, but it had a Mazda rotary engine in it. So my dad being a V8 guy, he ripped that out and put a 302 in it. Okay. All right, and so then when you got it, you decided to... Yeah, so Obviously. when, I got, it, when okay. I got it from my dad, my dad essentially, this when I was a kid, it was like my runaround boat. And so when I turned 18 and I figured I wanted to keep it, I bought it from him and, and started making it my own. Okay, so you, I know you do the, a lot of fabrication yourself. So like, break down some of the stuff you fabricated like yourself, like I know you do some so, welding and... So, to start, I mean it's a lot. So, the boat was never built to have a thousand horsepower in it. What, who, who's gonna build a 13 foot boat to have a thousand yeah, horsepower? Yeah. So, I had to reinforce the hull itself and put stringers. So if you look down there by the exhaust, which are the silver pipes, there's that stringer mm -hmm. on the inside there, and then it goes across with that aluminum plate. So I had to reinforce the hull just to be able to withstand the torsional forces of that much power. So then after I reinforced the hull, then I had to put motor rails on there to mount the new motor. And then obviously, if most people don't turbo a 302 Ford, so I had to make custom turbo headers. They're made from 321 Schedule 40 stainless, half inch stainless flanges, and then obviously the turbos, they're Org Warner, 64 and a half millimeter, um, twin scroll, so it's twin, twin scroll, waste gated through the exhaust housing, divided all the way up to the waste gate. Um, new gas tank to support the EFI and the return line, uh, liquid air intercooler, titanium charge pipes, a uh, little bit of everything. I mean, the boat was never built to have this much power, so, a lot of stuff had to be thought about in order to make it come to life, like what you see here today. So everything was built custom by you, correct? Yeah. Like all well, the welds, everything that's yeah, welded. Everything that's welded. So, you know, you look in here, the fuel tank. So the fuel tank completely custom. Uh, my buddy Alex Grudovich, uh, he cut it or he designed it in solid works for me, and then sent it over to the jet and had my friends over to the manufacturing bend it up for me. Intercooler, liquid air. Uh, my buddy Jason McGregor, which shout out to him, he is a stud, he does top-notch fabrication work, and a hell of a guy. I couldn't have done this without him, 
just a little advice that he gave me. I got all my plumbing fittings through him. So Phoenix Industries. All my fittings in here you see are Phoenix Industries. Shout out to them. They make top notch fittings. They look amazing. Go together nice. They're the best fittings I can find. So if you don't follow Jason McGregor, Raven Fabrication, give him a follow. Super cool guy. So you guys some turbos in here, what are the PSI that you're pushing and when does the turbo spool to like what RPMs? So the turbos, they spool at 3300 RPM. My, I redline the engine at 6000 simply because the I lose efficiency with the jet pump at over 6000. So these turbos are built to make maximum boost uh, between 4000 and 6000. So I use Borg Warner's Matchbox software. Cause I'm no, this is the first turbo build I've ever done. I've never built a turbo, turbo header. I've never built a turbo motor. What you see, I swear to you, this is the first first time I've ever done something like this. Um, but I use, you know, the resources that we have, like Borg Warner's Matchbox software. Somebody like me who knows nothing about turbos, you can go onto their website and you can enter in your engine specs and it'll tell you what turbo size you need to spool at what RPM. So I wanted to spool at 3000 RPM. So I picked out my exhaust housing side and then picked out the compressor side. So anybody who doesn't, if you don't know how to size a turbo, just get onto Borg Warner and go onto Matchbot. And I mean, I can tell you personally, I knew nothing about turbos, just using their software, I nailed it. They spool right where I want them to spool and they make boost it, all the boost in the world that I could ever use. Okay, and so like for the people that don't know how it works with this engine running with a jet, do you want to explain how it runs with the jet, How what it does? So in a jet boat, it's a little bit different than a regular boat. Most boats have the propeller that comes off the back and goes underwater. Well, a jet boat, my drive line runs directly off the back of the motor, goes through the transom of the boat, and the propeller, kind of like a jet ski, is encased inside the, the jet pump housing, or the bowl, as we call it. And then it pressurizes the water and shoots it out of the back. So you're driven by the thrust of water. That's how you turn, that's how you accelerate. It's all by the thrust of water, what direction you're throwing the water and how much you're throwing the water. So that's how, that's the princi basic principles of the jet boat. Okay, so if somebody wants to build a boat like this, I mean obviously this is one of one, <laughs> but if somebody wanted to do that themselves, what, how much hours did you put into it and how much money you put into it? Maybe break down the money wise, what, you know, cost, what, so, and then the total amount. First off, I'm a boat guy to start with, so, I know the industry, I have contacts in the industry. So just know that first off. But uh, to make a boat like this, what you see here, I have over 500 hours. Just, just in the motor, the twin turbo setup, not even including the original rigging, such as the jet pump, the steering, the wiring for the gauges, the existing hardware that I used. So I would say that if you wanted to make a boat like this with the level of quality that you see here, you're looking, 400 to 500 hours um, something in the realm okay like that yeah I mean it's a lot of hours <laughs> yeah, 400 well, or 500 that's still it's a, it's a lot of hours it's a lot of late nights a lot of nights where your girlfriend wishes she was with you but you know <laughs> <laughs> yep what so, problems did you run into did you have problems that you ran into shit you know the thing that really threw me off I would say was building the turbo headers I've never built turbo headers before so when I was building them and I was tacking them all together, I didn't anticipate, and I should have known this because I've been welding for six years, but I didn't anticipate how much the tube was gonna warp. So that's when I called my buddy Jason over at Raven Fabrication, and he kind of explained to me how you have to tack them and um, kind of account for the, the warpage of the metal. When you weld the metal, it's gonna bend and twist. Mm -hmm. So that kind of threw me off because I had warped my head flanges, even though I clamped them down, like all the pros do. You know, at least I thought I was doing it the way they did it, but, uh, and just making everything fit. Overall, the biggest challenge of the boat is I wanted to go to the lake on Friday, come back on Sunday, and I didn't want any problems, you know? Boat problems are shitty, because you're out on the water, and you can't just have your buddy come to you, because usually your buddy's drunk in yeah. the lake. <laughs> so, that's the, that's the first problem, but, you know, you're out on your weekend, your time off, and you want to be enjoying yourself. You don't want to be broke down with the boat. Yeah. So, there were so many times where I just wanted to rush and just get it done, you know, just get done with it, move on to the next thing so I could get in it and go. Um, but you do it like that and you're gonna have problems. So every wiring connection is shrink wrapped, 
everything was double checked to make sure there's no loose bolts, you know, nothing was coming apart, um, you know, and I guess, I guess the biggest thing for me on this build was uh, being honest with yourself, that you don't know everything and it's okay to ask questions. <laughs> one, one thing that, you know, my dad always told me is uh, don't pretend to know the answer, ask smart questions. Mm -hmm. And do you want to run it back for the price? If you guys can look and see what the turbos cost. They're about, I got them on sale during Thanksgiving for 750 bucks a piece, which I thought was a pretty good deal. They're just journal bearing turbos, nothing crazy. Actually diesel turbos, or a lot of guys put them on the 5.9 Cummins. Um, so the turbos about 650 bucks, the intercooler core about 300, all the titanium, four or 500. Now the engine internals, I got about 18 to 20,000 in just the engine internals. Because keep in mind, this this isn't an LS platform, so it's not able to hold the crank as sturdy as an LS can. So I had to account for that. So it's got billet main caps. So it's got billet main caps, four bolts blades, unlike the LS, which has six bolt main caps that come from the sides. So I also had to put a girdle on it. So just accounting for an engine that's it's not supposed to have turbos on it, where you're creating a lot of extra heat, pressure, things that the engine's not used to. So you have to account for that when you're building it and it costs money to do it right. How does the engine cool down? And I know you have some water running in there, so explain all that, how that, how so, that works. Us, us boat guys have it lucky. See, we got the whole lake around us that's 70 degrees. So that water comes in the back of the boat and then it comes all the way up to the front and then it comes into the inner cooler, which I'll, we'll get into all the fine nitty gritty details later, but basically the jet pump force feeds the engine with 70 degree lake water. The inner cooler is cooled with lake water and so my charge temps are between 65 and 75 degrees depending on the day and uh, how hard I've been running the boat. But that's how, so the intercooler is the first stop when the water goes in the boat and then it goes through the intercooler and it goes to the front of the engine like you can see here. So it comes in right here and then it comes out the back side of the intercooler to the front of the engine. That lower hose goes to the back of the engine and then you can see the two braided lines, they go to the waste gates. After the water goes through the waste gates, it comes out of the waste gates into the exhaust. A lot of people, I get asked all the time, well, isn't the exhaust a thousand degrees? I mean, doesn't that get hot? Well, no, you can look over at that pipe and you can see how it goes from blue to silver. So I inject water into the exhaust to cool it from 1300 degrees to about 150. So you can put your foot on the pipe for a second running down the lake and you won't burn yourself. Maybe something we didn't ask that you, you want to talk about that's in this boat right now. Just all the little details in the boat. Yeah. When you zoom, when you really start looking at it, uh, everything was done to the best of my ability. That's why it took so long. I didn't yeah. rush anything. Uh, it was really painstaking, especially for me. I've never done any of this before, so it was actually pretty intimidating. Tuning, tuning the fuel injection is a whole another thing. So I have um, Holly Super Sniper EFI on it, and I have a little handheld controller over there. So I wanted to put EFI on it because I didn't want to battle with a carburetor. You know, carburetors are a pain in the ass. I just, I don't like them. Yeah. They're, they're, they flood your engine and it's hard to get the tuning right on. So, Holly Super Sniper EFI, uh, I, hands down, it's awesome. It's easy to tune. I've never tuned EFI before and I was able to download their software online to my laptop and then automatically bring the base tune that, that creates for you when you first fire it up and then bring that into my software on the computer and then look at everything the volumetric efficiencies and uh, tune it. You know, a lot of people, I spend a lot of time at Harrison, Idaho. That's like my home in the summer and the weekends. Uh, I have a lot of people asking how I did all this and just did my homework. You have Google, you have YouTube, you have Instagram. People love to help. And yeah. people usually answer your questions and if they don't, they're deep. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, now for the exciting part, um, let's go take this thing out first then on the river. So, let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs>
Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys like this kind of content, something different. It's an awesome boat. We're gonna try to find other cool things that people have built like this and film it. So uh, thanks again to Andrew for yeah. letting us film. And thank you guys for and, uh, filming, showing us coming out. his build and if there's anything you want to add to the end of this video sure. and uh, if you got any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram, uh, S1000 underscore pilot and uh, yeah, I got a chronological build series on there so you can see step by step what I did. And uh, yeah, I'm always open. If you got questions, hit me up. There you go. All right, All guys. Right. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.